Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we are going to part eight of our Chevrolet big block building series. Now, uh, before we get into it, this is basically how to put on the oil pump and oil pan. It's a little bit of an art to it with the oil pan and there's two different ways to do it. So we first show the conventional way, kind of like the old school way with a four piece uh, gasket, you know, with cork and uh, spray adhesive. It's a little bit um, more vintage of a way to go. And then we move on to the more modern stuff, which is one, a big one piece gasket, which is my preference. It definitely seemed like a higher quality seal. And uh, the way I will be doing things from now on is using the one piece. So I definitely recommend it, but I also wanted to show the vintage alternative, um, just in case that's a route you wanted to go as well, which kind of made this video a little bit longer. And I also wanted to mention that the harmonic balancer is off in one of the installations and on in the other one. Don't worry, I didn't forget about it, but Putting on the harmonic balancer really has nothing to do with the oil pan, so you can do them independently or put one on and then the other or reverse them. It doesn't really matter that much. So we will go over putting on the harmonic balancer uh, in the next video, but this video is just about putting on your oil drive and the oil pan, which is pretty tricky, honestly, because most oil pans uh, fight you a little bit because they're not exactly flush with the block surface or there could be a little bit of a gapping a little bit of warping when it comes to putting that pan on so it might fight you a little bit so that's why you have to tighten in a big sequence which i'll go into later with all that out of the way let's go ahead and jump right in all right so here is our oil pump that we're going to be using today it's actually summit racing's in-house brand it's a high performance oil pump and it's a pretty beefy style unit if you look at it the one thing you want to check that's really important on these aftermarket units as well is that the oil pickup is actually welded into the body of the oil pump like this one is and you can make sure that there's no big gaping holes or something because then you'd have a problem and you'd have leakage you wouldn't get the right oil pressure and probably ruin your engine and you also want to spin the drive shaft here you can hear it nice and spin inside so it's not all locked up if this was like cog wheelie or didn't spin nice it's probably junk and i would not trust it and another note is when you don't change your oil the, all the gunk and crud gets caught on this screen and then your oil pump becomes starved, causing your engine to come starved and that will ruin your engine. So it's really important to change your oil because this is where all the crud ends up. So we need to prep our oil pump and how we're gonna do that is we're gonna place it in this oil here and more oil for the pump, the better. You can't use too much oil here. And then we're gonna take, it doesn't matter what kind of oil it is, that's not important. This is just for assembly purposes. And we're gonna pour it down its neck here and we're gonna spin, we're gonna spin this by hand. So I wanted to point out, I was spinning the oil pump the wrong way at first, because you can see bubbles coming out of the pickup there, so it's actually forcing air down into the oil. You actually wanna spin it uh, the way I'm looking at it clockwise, and you can see that it's puking oil up there. Bruh. So we know this pump is working really good and is fully primed. And then I also wanna go over that uh, in the Summit Racing Pump, it comes with its own metal uh, drive shaft here that it interfaces with the pump because the stock ones sometimes are made of plastic and it'll just snap right off and ruin your entire engine because you won't get any oil anymore. So if you're ordering this pump, I'm gonna leave a link down below in the description to it. Uh, use the hardware it came with. So this is a steel coupler. This is what I'm uh, referring to. This Sometimes these are made of plastic. On this application, make sure it's made of steel. And then it also came with our mounting stud nut and washer, which we're gonna put on right now. Stock applications are just a bolt. They don't use this stud system. So this is a little bit fancier. All right, and we have our uh, oil pump stud here. And like I said earlier, a stock application, this would be a, just a regular bolt. And you wanna make sure that it's not too long because if this thread surface is too long, it'll pinch the bearing on the number five here between the bearing and the crankshaft and it won't turn or it'll uh, gall those surfaces and that's extra bad. So, uh, but I know this is the correct length because I've already installed it. <laughs> and you just put it in by hand and where it stops is where it stops. So I wanted to explain real quick uh, how come this is not just hydrolocked into oblivion because it's a mechanical pump and you're basically dealing with hydraulic pressure. Um, it's because of this governor spring here. If too much pressure is built up in the pump, it'll actually bleed right back out into the pan. Now, a uh, problem arises when the spring breaks and excess pressure that would be going into your engine just kind of goes into the pan and you don't have enough oil pressure and that can ruin your engine as well. So it's important that this spring is functioning. So I have my oil pump drive gear here uh, sauteing right in our oil. <laughs> and uh, we can install that right on 
our drive here just like that and now it's ready to be installed on the engine. So now we can install our oil pump here and it's going to be a little goopy so have some shop towels handy. We're going to flip it over this way and feed our drive down there. Put that on the stud. Lock that down into place like that. Perfect. Then we can install our washer here and our nut on the stud. Then we can grab our 11 16 wrench or socket if you want to. And we're just going to snug that up while I go look up a torque spec. All right, uh, so our torque spec for this application is 65 foot pounds. So I have my torque wrench set to that. And there we go. So next thing we're going to do is take a shop towel and some carburetor spray. And we're going to clean off the gasket uh, mating surface here. Making sure this is really clean all around here on the block as well on those, the bottom of the timing cover. And the back side of number five on the mains here. So everywhere that the oil pan touches needs to be very, very clean. And you use that, you're going to be using carb spray for that. We're here at the front of our engine where our timing covers meeting our block here. And we're going to grab some silicone rubber and apply it between those two surfaces. So that's nice and handled. And then what we're going to do is put a nice skin uh, around that sealing surface. Like this, all the way to the back side. And then we're also going to grab some more silicone rubber and put it right here on this side as well. Make sure it gets down in there. So this is what our finished product should look like before we apply our gasket. And our gasket is interesting because it has these little rubber, I don't know what you'd call them, dongles hanging down. So you'd grab, what you want to do is be very careful because you don't want to snap these off. While you're pushing, you want to grab the end of it with a pair of needle nose and push with the other side. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. And every dongle has an associated hole and it goes on like this with the wings facing back towards the engine. I'm going to go ahead and line that up. go there's one and then we have little dongles on the sides of the wings here that go inside the block there's little holes and those are uh, blind so they just go straight into our block next thing we can do is take some silicone rubber on the back seal here and apply it in this groove and on the corners where the little seal or little gasket wings kind of sweep back we want that to be nice and uh, silicone rubbered. We can go ahead and set that down making sure that the wings of it are facing back toward the engine. We want to start in the center and squish it into its home. Going down evenly like this so you have a nice good seal with that silicone rubber. And that's what it should look like. So the next thing we need to do is put a little dab of silicone rubber in basically this socket where the uh, cork gasket's gonna sit. We're gonna do that to all four uh, wings that sweep back into the block. So we're gonna get our cork gaskets here and put them on. They only go on one way and it's the blue stripes up and it doesn't have the little bite out for the oil filter for uh, the passenger side here. And we know it goes this way because the little tabs fit in those little sweep back uh, wing areas we were working with earlier with silicone rubber. And it's going to sit down like this. I don't want to put it in the silicone just yet. I just want to make sure it test fits correct. And it does. So now we can grab our contact cement. So we're back at our old friend, the trash can. And we know that the blue stripes face up towards us. So the plain cork side is going to get nice and hosed down with some contact cement here. And now we can go to the block. Now we can set this down into place. Make sure there's some cement there. Then we can lift it back up with the air get to it and place it back down, making sure that the tabs are going into that swept back gasket area and all of your bolt holes are showing perfectly because if you don't the gasket won't be seated correctly and you will get a leak but this is perfect. So I'm only going to show you how to do one side the other side is exactly the same way with the blue stripes. So make sure that the gasket is going on correctly. All right so uh, here's our oil pan we're using it's an aftermarket uh, unit from Moroso I believe it's a six quart pan uh, link down below in the description to this exact pan I'm using. I like it I think it looks amazing and it's a performance oil pan it makes it looks kind of hot rod. I dig that aesthetic. 
Um, also came with the Moroso official oil pan uh, bolts here. Part number's right there. I will leave things, these down below in the description as well. You, uh, I did want to say you can also use studs and nuts, but we're going to be using uh, bolts here today. And of course, like everything else, we want to grab a shop towel and some carburetor spray and clean the mating surface. We kind of have an advantage here because this is a new oil pan. It should be clean, but even ours had a little bit of filth on there, not a lot. Um, and obviously, if you're rebuilding a stock unit, you got to make sure this is exceptionally clean. And there we go. This thing's ready for installation. All right, and then uh, kind of like everything else we've done today, we're going to get some silicone rubber and apply a skin around our cork gasket here, a nice thin skin for us that is going to provide nice leak prevention in the future. And don't go crazy with it. Just a nice skin is what you're looking for. And then don't forget to do our front and rear rubber seals with silicone rubber as well. So I've zoomed in here on the corners and this applies to all four corners of our seals front and rear. And uh, you want to make sure you glob on the silicone rubber pretty good in that corner because it tends to leak more. So when we're putting our oil pan on, uh, I can't stress enough, this needs to be nice and clean inside uh, and on the mating surface. And when we're placing our oil pan, we're going to make sure that we're going down nice and straight, kind of like when we dropped in the crankshaft. Just like that. All right, so now we're going to grab our uh, Moroso bolts I showed earlier, and we're just going to start by threading those in by hand all around the oil pan. So I'm just loosely tightening these just so I can get all the rest of the bolts in here. There we go. So these, so these four bolt back ones are lightly tightened. Now we can move on. So I'm not tightening these, I'm just, you know, screwing them in a little bit. And uh, it does help to use a nice extension here because it's not going to line up, you know, like a die or anything. It's, it's going to take a little persuading, just a little bit. So the front two are special. They're a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner, and a little bit longer. And uh, we put those in for the front timing cover here. There we go. So we're going to go and start from the center and go in a circular pattern, just like we did the main bolts from earlier. You can uh, watch that video. It's in a big playlist here on YouTube. So we can start in the center here and just go hand tight. And basically, imagine you're just drawing a big spiral. And there we go, we've gone in a nice big spiral pattern. It's very time consuming and you want to do this a couple of times because of the uh, gasket compression like we talked about earlier. All right, so our torque spec for today is 12 foot pounds and we're gonna do that spiral thing like we did earlier. And we're gonna do it two or three times to account for gasket crushage. So, and once you've done it in a spiral pattern quite a few times, I uh, would do it three times, you're all good to go. So we showed previously using a cork gasket and it's a little bit more of a traditional way to go using four pieces, but the more modern stuff is this way. I have a single piece gasket from Molly and uh, you can get this pretty much anywhere. I've left a link down below in the description. The part number we're using today is a OS32459. Uh, and it's just a big one piece thing because uh, when we put our gasket on we noticed a little bit of swedging from the rear uh, seal for the pan and if you get that wrong it's just gonna leak a ton and we want to do this right so we figured why not show both ways how to do it the old school way and the new school way so now we're gonna go for the new school go ahead and open this bad boy up here and make sure it's right uh, there's a bunch of other companies that make this as well uh, including Moroso which makes our pan but um, this one was the best 
fit for us. And we can see that it has all the correct lines like our previous set did. It even it has, has the tabs on the front for the timing cover, which is really, really important. And this actually feels like a better, more heavy duty gasket. And I believe there's lines running through it as well. It feels like there's metal in between here uh, too, which is super, super cool. And the fact that it's one piece, it can't actually leak. So that's really, really exciting. The next thing we're gonna do is take our old friend silicone rubber and apply it through our finger here. And what we wanna do is put, basically put a thin layer on all four corners of the front and back, and also a thin film here on the front and here on the rear. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And uh, usually with silicone rubber, you can kinda of get away, th away with using a lot, but in this situation, uh, you really need to have a thin layer because if any gets in the engine, it's gonna collect on the screen for the oil pump. And uh, obviously if that gets clogged up, uh, you have no oil pressure and your engine destroy destroys itself. So. so this is basically what you're looking for here. For the silicone on the rear. And then on the front, this is more or less what you're looking for. A nice thin layer over the timing cover and a little thicker on the corners, but not super thick. You don't want this getting inside your engine. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, and some of you might think this is unnecessary, but our kit came with these really cool dowels that you can screw into the block and will help with gas pin alignment. Also, if you're working on an engine that's actually in the car, so this side is pointing down, this will uh, go in the bottom and the gasket will hold on to it and then you can put the pan on. It's a little bit easier uh, to do it that way. And I like them because they're good for alignment. And when you're working with silicone rubber, the more precise, the better. So why not just put them in the corners here and uh, give us some extra verification that what we're doing is right, why not? Just screw those in, they don't have to be super tight. Perfect. All right. Now we can get our gasket, making sure that it's going on correctly. Uh, the bigger side goes towards the front, the smaller side goes toward the rear. And we can lower that down. See where the posts are helping us? Very cool. And then that can go down. Making sure that the little uh, tabs go in the timing covers hole. Just like that, very good. Put the rear on, make sure that goes into its groove, its home. Just like that. And we are looking pretty good. And then, uh, just like we did before, what we're gonna do is use some silicone rubber on our finger here and apply it to our front seal. Do a nice uh, skin here. All right, for the close-up view, again, this is what it should look like. And on the front, we're a little more generous with our silicone rubber because it has quite the deep grooves in the front and it's not fitting 100%, so I wanna make sure it uh, fits perfectly with the silicone. All right, we've cleaned our pan once again with carburetor spray, so there's no grease or any kind of ickies on the mating surface, and then what we're gonna do is drop it down as flat as possible. Make sure you're equal on all sides when you're coming straight down with the pan, and the dowels actually help you with that because it stops beforehand and then you can just apply even pressure. Like that. So it's actually on perfectly flat. So what I have here is a very low powered uh, screw gun basically set to a very low setting because what I'm doing is basically just getting the bolts started. I'm not tightening them down just yet because I want to do this in a uh, uh, spiral pattern, but See, it's already give, the, the clutch is already activated in the gun, even though the bolt just barely started. So you wanna just keep doing this in a spiral pattern, just like we did the main caps uh, earlier in this video series. So now that I've gotten enough bolts in, uh, these dowels are unnecessary, so we can remove them. Technically, you could remove them after the first uh, bolt, but I wanna make sure the gasket doesn't wander uh, while we're putting in bolts. So now I've turned the uh, clutch setting on my little screw gun here up a few notches, and we're just gonna go around a spiral pattern so the pan kinda sinks down, we can get more bolts in. 
So again, our torque spec is 12, so we're gonna grab our torque wrench after tightening everything in a spiral pattern and do it again, but this time, make sure it's to the correct torque spec. So what I like to do is let this thing sit upside down like this. Uh, I know you might be antsy to go put heads on it, um, but you're using assembly lube and that might get on the silicone rubber and make it not work as effectively, which kind of negates what we just did here. So let this thing sit for a full 24 hours upside down with the pan up like this for maximum sealing potential. So that's how you put your oil pump and oil pan on your big block Chevy. All applicable links are down below in the description. Make sure you check out the whole big block building series. If you have already, I thank you a million times. It's been really cool to see a lot of the positive feedback I've been getting. I didn't think this video series would be all that popular, but I'm really happy to be wrong and I'm really happy to be making this type of content uh, for YouTube. So make sure you check out those other videos, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time.